Hello, I'm the Nostalgia Critic. I remember it so you don't have to. What can you say about the action-packed, family-friendly Superman movies? I love them. Well, most of them. Well, some of them. Two of them. But either way, they're part of the all-American icon that is Superman. Now, for as good as these movies get, and as bad as these movies get, they all have their fill of stupid, stupid moments. Now, I know they're supposed to be lighter and more friendly, but most of the time they just come off as logically idiotic. That's why I've compiled a list of the top 11 dumbest moments in the Superman films. Why top 11? Because I like to go one step beyond. So, sit back and enjoy the top 11 stupidest Superman moments. Number 11. The casting of Superman Returns. Now, I don't mean cast members like Kevin Spacey and Frank Lagella. They did okay. What I'm mainly referring to is Brandon Roth as Superman and Kate Bosworth as Lois Lane. I mean, they weren't god-awful or anything, but they look 16. It's like if Superman met Dawson's Creek. Oh, wait, they already did that, but you get my point. They're simply too young to be in these roles. When I saw the first Superman movie, I didn't see actors. I saw friggin' Superman and Lois Lane. When I saw this new movie, I saw kids dressing up for Halloween. Where'd the real actors go? Sounds cheesy, I know. On top of that, they were pretty bland. I mean, both of them are supposed to be strong-willed, clever, and spunky characters. But here, it was like watching first graders holding hands at a school play. You didn't really buy it. It's a little... alien. I guess the reasoning behind this casting was, despite his age, Brandon Roth did look an awful lot like Christopher Reeve. Well, if that's the reasoning, why didn't you hire this kid, then? I don't know. Like I said, these two aren't horrible, they're just miscast. And when your protagonists look like people you'd ask to the prom rather than all-American heroes, something is definitely wrong. Personally, I think that's a load of crap. Number 10. The dumbass kid at Niagara Falls from Superman 2. Yeah, you remember this little moron? I mean, I know you gotta put people in perilous situations, but how dumb is this kid? And where the hell is his mother? Yeah, honey, that's nice. Just don't fall off into the waterfall, okay, honey? I lost five of your brothers that way. I know kids do stupid things, but this is pretty hard to swallow. I mean, does the idiot have a death wish? My guess is he's probably friends with that girl who plays hopscotch off a cliff on that corn album. <laughs> that came totally out of nowhere! Remember me as a foolish clod! Of course, though, Superman comes in to rescue the boy and save the day. Take that, Darwin! Natural Selection doesn't win today! There you go. Again! Again! No, I'm sorry. Only one ride to a customer. And if you try to commit suicide again, I'll kill ya. Number 9. The Romantic Flying Scene Recap from Superman 4. Now, we all remember the flying scene from the first Superman. It was charming, romantic, and all that other mushy stuff. But when you try to recreate it scene by scene, that's just embarrassing. Okay, so it starts off with Superman wanting to talk to Lois about something important. Rather than just flying to her apartment like before, he decides he wants to fuck around with her a bit. Clark? Clark, things aren't that bad! Clark, stop! Clark! Clark! I thought the threat of imminent death would be good for a laugh. <laughs> Seriously, though, I am a human god. So they decided to go flying around for some reason, as Lois has no questions about her co-worker of 20 years being the man of friggin' steel. She just kind of accepts it like she found an extra 20 in her pocket. Now, this scene, in all honesty, wouldn't be quite so bad if they didn't rip off every single moment from the first one. Gee, is he gonna fly through the city side by side with her like the first one? You bet. Is he gonna support her with just his fingertips, which the laws of weight and mass totally says is impossible? <laughs> you know it. Is he going to let her fall just so he can swoop down and save her? Well, it wouldn't be a complete ripoff if he didn't, would it? Outside of just using the direct clips, there's absolutely no difference between this scene and the one from the first film. What was the point of it? Who knows? Maybe it was just to take the number 9 spot on this moronic countdown. That's not fair. Number 8. The Woman and the Baby Carriage from Superman 2. 
I'm sensing a pattern here that all mothers in Superman movies are complete morons. Lois included in the latest film, too. How much more obvious can you freaking get? But this one takes the cake, as a large tower is about to fall on a woman and her baby. So what does she do? Absolutely nothing. No, worse than nothing, she covers the child with her body. Yeah, that'll save you, you brainless bimbo! They're called legs! You move them back and forth to create a running motion. Look at this, at the rate the tower is falling, the way she's standing there crying, she could have run to Florida and back by now. I almost killed my only son. I don't know why mothers are so stupid in these movies, but quite frankly, this is why I think sometimes you need a license to be a parent. Like pets? I suppose so. Number seven. The special effects of Superman 4. To the credit of the first two films, you could never see those wires that were holding him up. Superman 4? Not so much. Look at all these wire shots, they don't even try to cover them! Or how about the effects in the scene I just showed you a moment ago? Yeah, Lois is falling pretty fast there, isn't she? She's falling to the ground like a... feather. And now how about this? You can actually see the black curtains that are supposed to be outer space! THIS IS LIKE AN EDWARD MOVIE! How about this scene when he's carrying the Statue of Liberty? Wow, instant movie magic. And how about this one stupid blue screen shot that they keep using over and over and over again? You'd think as time went by, the effects would get better for these movies. But in Superman's case, it isn't the lead we can't see through, rather those thick, bulging wires that constantly keep getting in the way. This looks like a job for Photoshop. Number six. Those stupid, stupid glasses. From which movie? All of them. How come nobody can ever see past them? Is it really that great a disguise? Look, there's even a scene where Lois takes off Clark's glasses, leaving him totally exposed. SOMEBODY FREAKING NOTICE HIM! I mean, how is everybody constantly fooled? This idea is so flawed that just about everybody in the world has made fun of it. The Tick, Mystery Men, and many more. It's a suspension of disbelief that, quite frankly, everybody disbelieved. But it could be worse. He could disguise himself as a British natty when secretly inside he's just a hairy, loud, obnoxious comedian. But that wouldn't be nearly as plausible, would it? Clark Kent, if you can't see past his glasses, then quite frankly, you need glasses. And that's no shame. Number five. 